During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to answer a question we commonly get, especially from non-farmers, are herbicides safe for human beings? Now that is an interesting and very important question. When we're farming and we're putting herbicides onto our fields to try to stop weeds, the first consideration we have is what is the human safety factor here? What do I need to do to protect myself if I'm using this product to kill the weeds? Yeah, now fortunately here in the United States, we have the EPA and they do an excellent job of thoroughly evaluating products over a long period of time. It often takes three to five years for them to fully evaluate things and then giving the okay to use those things in certain situations. But for any farmer, they have to read and follow the label directions and oftentimes these labels are several pages to maybe even as much as a hundred pages long. So there are a lot of details and a lot of things that need to be followed through on. Well, the safety factor is really a big thing, Brad, and that's one thing I'm very curious to look at with any product that I would consider using on my farm. I wanna make sure that the safety factor is good. And when you think about this, it's something we should be looking at with everything that we use in life. For example, table salt. You don't think that's a bad thing, right? Well, table salt's okay. I can put salt on my steak or salt on my eggs or whatever food that you're eating, but the dose makes the poison. With table salt, that dose is 3,000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So, well, you're probably not gonna overdo that in one shot, but the same is true with herbicides. If you see something that has a very similar safety rating, like atrazine, for example, very common corn herbicide, it's 3,000 milligrams per kilogram. Well, what Darren's you don't wanna eat atrazine, but you wanna be very careful. If you have a drop of atrazine that gets near you, it's no concern. But if you're going to take a bath in atrazine, I would be worried. Okay, what Darren's talking about here is the lethal dose. There is something called the LD50, and you can find that right on the material safety data sheet for every pesticide out there. And quite frankly, for almost any product that is used in the United States, there has to be this material safety data sheet or MSDS, and it will tell you about the toxicity. Not only the oral toxicity, but also let's say you get it on your skin. I mean, there are different ways you could come in contact with this, whether it's breathing it, uh, ingesting it somehow, some way, or just getting it on yourself. And then we'll also talk on this material safety data sheet about what to do in the event that something does go wrong and you come in contact with that product. Now, with herbicides that are getting commonly used in farming in America, they're relatively safe, but you still have to use personal protective equipment as advised by that pesticide label to make sure that you're safe. And this should really go into, again, everything that you use, household cleaning products, the gasoline you pump in your car, you should be concerned with what the safety factors are and take the proper precautions. All right, so Darren mentioned gasoline, and let me just say this. Gasoline is way more dangerous than any product that we use on our farm. And it's not even close. Just a little swig of gasoline and you're dead. It is absolutely not that same way with herbicides. So yes, we have to be careful with herbicides, but the good news is a lot of the super dangerous products that were used years ago have now been banned. We're very lucky that we have a lot of pretty safe products on the market today, but nevertheless, we as farmers are trying to be careful all the time using personal protective equipment and even just thinking about how we used to spray. Well, it used to be open cab tractors. Well, now we have not only good tractor cabs, but we have tremendous air filters in those cabs to filter out all the things that could potentially hurt us. So a lot of changes have been made over the years. We're super happy about it. And there is a continual search for safer and safer herbicides. And the good news with a lot of these newest herbicides being developed, they're found naturally in the environment. So when we can find things that come from a tree or from uh, root fungus, if we're going to spray a fungicide or something like that, then those are fantastic things that already exist in nature and are much safer for human beings. Well, you want to be safe when you're trying to take out our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what things might work coming up later in the show. <music>